So some people like to play their games with a gamepad, while others like to use the good old keyboard and mouse. And if you're like me, you switch input devices depending on the genre of the game. For example, I prefer a gamepad when it comes to platformers or any kind of racing game, but I need a keyboard and an inverted mouse for first person shooters. Yes, I play with an inverted mouse and I'm proud of my disability. Most games that I know have a feature that no matter what you plug into your computer, you can immediately use it as an input device to control your character. Whether it's a PlayStation controller, an Xbox controller or your brand new Sony digital camera, I don't know. I'm currently working on a puzzle platformer and I'd like to be able to play it with a gamepad or a keyboard. After a long two minutes research, I came to the conclusion that it's not that easy with Unity's old input system, as the button mapping differs from gamepad to gamepad. So I came across Unity's new input system and boy, it was easier to implement than my and your mom. Okay, let's go straight to the tutorial. I set up a small demo scene with some platforms and a player with a rigid body that falls to the ground. The first thing we need to do is to install the new input system. Go to Window, Package Manager and in the search bar search for Input System and click Install. Unity needs to restart in order to enable the backends, so answer with yes when the prompt shows up. After Unity has started again, we add a new component to our player called Player Input. We don't have any input actions yet, so we have to create one and give it a name. As we open up the new input actions, we see that the input system already gives us some default actions. For example, move is mapped to the left stick on any gamepad and to the WASD and arrow keys on a keyboard and returns a vector 2. I won't go over action maps, look and fire in this tutorial, but for a real 2D platformer, we need to add another action for jumping. In the empty binding, then choose gamepad for the control scheme and button south as the path. Button south is the X on a PlayStation controller and the A on an Xbox controller. After that, add another binding for jump by clicking on the plus next to it. This time, choose keyboard for the control scheme and space as the path. Save the asset and close it. Go back to the player input component and select our newly created input actions. For behavior, we select invoke unity events as we want to create our own methods for moving and jumping. But before we start coding, we still need to do two small things. Add an empty game object called ground check to your player and position it right below his feet. Next, create a new layer and apply it to every platform in your game where you want your player being able to jump. Now add a script to the player and open it up. To use the new input system we need a using statement called UnityEngine.InputSystem. Then we need three public fields to reference the rigid body 2D, the ground check and the layer mask we created earlier. We also need four private fields, a float for the horizontal input, a float for the speed, a float for the jumping power and a boolean that tells us in which direction our player is looking. If you ever created a player controller with the old input system, this should already look pretty familiar to you. To check if our player is grounded and therefore able to jump, we need a private method that returns a boolean. Physics2D overlap circle takes in three parameters. In our case the ground check position, a small radius and the ground layer mask. The next method is going to flip our character on the x-axis. We'll call it later in the update method. Let's create a public method called move with an input action callback context parameter called context. This tells us when an action was triggered. 
Our context in this case returns a vector 2 and we only want to read the x value of it and parse it into our horizontal field. In the update method, we then set the rigid body's velocity to our horizontal value multiplied by our speed value while keeping the vertical momentum. Still in the update method, we want to flip our character when he changes direction. To do this, we check if he's not facing right and the horizontal value is greater than zero, and check if he's facing right and the horizontal value is less than zero, and then call our previously created flip method. Let's create another method for jumping. It also takes in a callback context as a parameter. But this time, we don't want to read a value, we just want to know if the button was pressed. So if the context was performed, in other words, the button was pressed, and our player is grounded, we set the vertical velocity of the player's rigid body to our jumping power while keeping the horizontal momentum. And if the context was cancelled, which means the button was released and we're still moving up, we multiply only the vertical velocity by 0.5. This allows us to jump higher by holding the jump button longer and jump lower by only tapping the button. Back in Unity, we have to add the rigid body, the ground check and the ground layer to our player script. Open up the events in the player input component and add our move and jump method to the correct events. If we hit play now, we can control the player with the keyboard or any gamepad. Nice! This tutorial only scratches the surface of the new input system, but I wanted to make it as easy as possible. If you found my video helpful, please consider subscribing and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.